All right, guys, welcome back for the sixth episode of this series where we are creating an entire app using Firebase, Flutter, and Block. And this episode will focus on user stream. And this is gonna be a very, very straightforward episode, but I thought it needed its entire uh, section because it's a bit complex uh, uh, in itself uh, to understand. So let's jump right into it. So basically, here where were, we were there at the last episode. So we can go ahead and close everything. And we are going to be here under the user repository again, lib source and under uh, the Firebase user repository that Dart uh, class right here. So remember last episode, we've created set user data, get my user. And here we are going to want to navigate at the very top of this folder. Uh, in order to create the method that we want. So uh, before we want to do that, remember we are extending this uh, abstract class, the user repository, the Dart class, and we'll want to create the class here first. So basically we want to create a stream today. We want to create a stream of user. And here you might want to say, but Romain was created my user class, not a user class, right? And you'll be right, but this user class is actually the class that's coming from Firebase authentication. So you want to import Firebase authentication inside your user repository Dart class. And you might want to tell me why we're not want, we, we would not want to return a my user object directly instead of a user from Firebase authentication, because we could have used directly this object in, inside our app and get rid of this get my user uh, uh, class right here uh, sorry function and the thing is that you will have uh, asynchronous problems if you want to do that especially when you create an account because what's happening is in order to get the data that we want we need to access firestore the document itself in firestore okay a stream and the stream that we are going to use in order to say that if the user is login or log out is going to be triggered every time that a user triggers this button login sign up or log out and if we are adding on top of that the asynchronous of getting a document you might get some kind of lap and some errors at the end of that so i prefer for now to take all of those things separately. And you might get them, you might not get them, it's a bit random, you know, but I know for a fact that I've already had them and now it's the way I've do I'm doing it. So at the very top here, we are gonna create this get user stream. And this is gonna look like this. So I've added the little comments here so you can understand. So basically we want to return a stream. What's the difference between a stream and a future? So basically you can look at you can look at it as water, right? So if you open your tap water at your house and you immediately close it, that's going to be a future. So you're going to take a picture, okay, of the data at one point in time and if you want to get the new updated data, you'll need to open the tap again, close it again and you'll get a new picture, you'll get new water, okay? A stream basically works different. A stream is if you let your tap water open, so the water is flowing, and every time that a new type of water is coming, so it may, you have new data, for instance, in our database, you'll get a notification. You'll get some kind of notification in our app that we can use in order to show different things. And this is exactly what's happening here. So we are returning a stream of type user. Remember, it's the user from Firebase authentication, not the user class that we've created. So we return Firebase auth. So this is this parameter that we've created before and accesses the method auth state changes. And this method, as you can see right here, returns a stream of user. And this user can be known. Okay, perfect. And then we are mapping this stream. All right. And here we have the user then. And we are returning directly this user so here it's a step a, a, a little further step but you can directly return firebase user if you want that's uh, that's how you prefer and that's pretty much it for this trigger 
uh, between an authenticated user and an unauthenticated user. And that's pretty much what we are going to be using in the next episode, because the next episode will be creating the authentication block and the sign-in block and the sign-up block that we'll use in our app to react to different parameters, to different states that the backend will tell us and that the UI will have to react to. So I'm looking forward to talk to you in the next episode where we'll actually start building the app and make it look better. See you in the next episode, guys.